Hey YouTube, IB Figs here. Welcome to some more WWE figure news. The series on this channel where we go over any new WWE figure news in regards to lineups, new pictures, and release dates and whatnot. We've got quite a packed episode today. We've got a few new series that's been hitting shelves this week in the US and just being released and some new pictures and whatnot. So let's waste no time and get right into it. The first set came out about a week ago. It's hitting stores, Walmart stores in the US sadly, only Walmart. They're exclusive to Walmart. It is the WWE Walmart exclusive WWE Flashback series. Man, I'm so jealous of you US collectors that may be watching out there because this is the set that that I've really always wanted because flashbacks being released in the elite line the regular elite line they don't always sell well especially here in New Zealand like in the warehouse at the moment we have Ken Shamrock and Warlord lying around and no one's ever gonna buy those I don't think unless they're on clearance now, the same thing happened with Kamala and Magnum TA last year just the whole year they clogged up the shelves so I'm really glad that they've got their own separate series now. They're separating from the main elite line, but I am really jealous of the US collectors because, yeah, exclusive to Walmart. But there is a basic line where if you buy all four figures, you can build a Howard Finkel figure. How cool is that? So in the set, you've got Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, Sergeant Slaughter, Rick Rude, and Cowboy Bob Orton. The design on these figures looks so cool, the attires, really awesome. The only downside is the new basic articulation where you can't rotate the biceps and you can't move the toes up and down. That, apart from that, like the design of the figures, the general look of them, they look really, really awesome. And the Howard Finkel figure, that one looks alright too. Now we've got uh, some more pictures for the Elite line in this flashback series. In this, you, it's not a builder figure set, but if you buy all four figures in this set, you can build a SummerSlam 1989, I believe, backstage interview set. The first one in the set is the Ultimate Warrior. He comes with the Winged Eagle title, the blue strap one, which hasn't been released very many times by Mattel, which is really cool. He's in his USA attire, and he also comes with the scepter, and of course, as I said, each figure comes with a part to build the interview set, so you can't go wrong with another Elite Ultimate Warrior figure, that one especially looks really cool, because they haven't released an Elite figure in that attire yet, and nothing really like that, so I think that's really cool. Next, we've got Yokozuna, this is the third time this figure Oh, this character has been released in the Elite line, but you can't go wrong with the Yokozuna, just like Ultimate Warrior. Because the Yokozuna figures, they look really good, and each one is slightly different. This one looks a lot more like the original Elite Series 15 figure. Same coat, same head, just slight variation on the attire, just colours swapped around a bit, but... Oh well, yeah, you can't go wrong with it, and anyone that missed out on the first one, yeah, you guys can go get that one, because that's a great opportunity. Next we have, oh my god, I, I'd never thought they'd release a figure of this. Six Park, aka X Park, aka 123 Kid, aka Sean Waltman. Man, so cool. It looks a lot like the Elite Series 33 figure, but it's from when he was in the NWO. He, ex he comes with the NWO shirt, the spray paint, and the glasses. I hear the glasses don't really fit on him but that doesn't really matter. That's a figure that I, I likely will go to eBay for just to just to get my hands on it because that's one that I really, really want. And the last figure in the set, and this is so cool, it is Mean Gene Oakland, the first time in the line. Now this one I hear has been the hardest to find and rightfully so because no one's ever been able to get a Mean Gene Oakland figure before, not by Mattel and it comes with a microphone and a spare red suit jacket and the red sleeves to match so you can pop the arms in and out. That's a really cool concept just to get some different looks and the figure looks great. Uh, it's a figure they've been meaning to release for quite some time and finally sees the light of day. 
Next, we have the Entrance Greats Jeff Hardy. That figure was just released on Ringside Collectibles this week. Now, I have a little bit of a tough opinion on it. So if you guys really, really love the look of the Entrance Greats Jeff Hardy figure and you don't want to be put off it, if you've already seen pictures of it, please click off this video right now or skip the video past this point because I'm going to rip it apart a little bit. So if you guys knew, back when Mattel first started in their first Elite Wave, they were planning to release a Jeff Hardy figure. But then Jeff Hardy left WWE for been a part of eight years and that figure was never officially released yet some pictures were still showing of it and some people managed to get their hands on a prototype version which I believe could just be a fake version and there are uh, very few that are the final product version that actually got out there too and I have to say that's a pretty cool looking figure based on the 26th of December 2008 edition of Smackdown that's where he wore that specific face paint so now that Jeff Hardy is back in WWE Mattel was able to release a Jeff Hardy figure and they thought that they'd uh, pick up right where they left off and go ahead with the release for that figure or a very similar version of that figure and although it's really cool that they did that the back of the packaging says it's from Armageddon 2008 but it is not from Armageddon 2008. He had different face paint for that. Um, yeah, just not the same. It is from the 26th of December 2008 edition of SmackDown, where he fought Big Show in the main event. Uh, the green face paint. Um, I'll see if I can bring up some comparisons on the front of the screen um, from what he actually wore compared to the figure. Now, as you guys can see from these pictures, it is not 100% accurate. And I have to be perfectly honest with you, I prefer the paint from the unreleased Elite Series 1 Jeff Hardy figure on the face. Um, well, at least the black around the eyes. That Yeah, I prefer that at least. I like the detail on the new entrance grades, but it's just not good. It looks, like, it looks a bit rushed, to be honest. And also, if you look at the hair color, now the hair color is completely off. The hair color on the entrance grates is like a lightish purple with some little highlights in there. But when he actually had that face paint on, he had like dark red hair with little darker highlights and stuff in it. So that is completely inaccurate there as well. And the last thing, it is an entrance grates figure, which means it's supposed to perfectly capture his entrance. Now, during his entrance in the 26th of December 2008 edition of SmackDown, he did not wear that shirt that he comes with in the figure. So that is inaccurate, completely defeats the purpose of the Entrance Greats line. Instead, he came out with the WWE title, which he had at the time. That's what the figure should come with. Uh, it should be the WWE Championship rather than the shirt. Either that or just have that along with the shirt. Yeah, that really, really annoys me. Um, inaccurate date on the back of the packaging and the face paint is a bit off and the entrance shirt and stuff. Like, it's not even relevant. Like, get the right date and capture it because it's the, it's called entrance grades. It's supposed to capture your entrance and that doesn't. He, it comes with a shirt that he never wore during that and doesn't even come with a WWE title he held at the time, so it completely defeats the purpose of the line. But now, let's move on to the next bit of figure news we have. It is WWE Elite Series 57. They released the pictures today for it, or Ringside Collectibles did. Uh, yeah, pictures courtesy of Ringside Collectibles. Sorry about that pause there, I was just bringing up the pictures on my phone so I could review it for you guys. The first one is Baron Corbin. Now I do like he comes with the money in the bank briefcase, it's been a while since they've released that blue briefcase. And I like that it comes with the cloth, the cloth singlet, because it's, it's not really often that they make the singlets cloth. But I don't like how he has so much hair on the top of his head, how his hairline goes down to like hair, where in reality it starts like up there somewhere um, and the goatee looks off all I can say is that I'm gonna pass on it next Ty Dillinger now I actually think this one looks really cool I don't really have anything to complain about it I like the entrance jacket on it um, of course you can't make that one cloth 
but they molded that one really well. The face looks like him, and I like the maroon attire. Is it maroon or purple? It's hard to tell, but I think that's a really cool one, and if I get the chance to get it, maybe just under retail price, I'll get it, because it looks like a really cool figure. Next, we've got Seth Rollins from his WrestleMania 33 attire. Now, this one, I really like how they went all out on this one. They sculpted all the details on the shirt. Obviously, the shirt will be removable, well, I hope at least, and they even sculpted all the details on the pants. But what I don't like about what they did with the pants is people, all the collectors have been complaining about how skinny the elite Seth Rollins legs are, and they haven't really... Uh, listen to the collectors they haven't gone back and re-sculpted some better legs for Seth Rollins but now they had the opportunity to but instead they just used the same skinny legs and just remolded those with the designs now that kind of annoys me there but I do appreciate how they did the molding on it and especially the shirt and stuff next we have Jeff Hardy the first Jeff Hardy figure in the main elite line and they've wasted no time and gone straight in the line it's like a 2017 version of Jeff Hardy he comes with the sleeveless shirt re reborn by fate 2017 version but as far as I can remember in 2017 he just wore the full suits like the morph suits he didn't have the white armbands or anything please correct me if I'm wrong here but it looks kind of like a mix between his 2008 to 2009 and 2017 looks. But behind that shirt, it doesn't look like he's wearing a singlet. I could be wrong, but I, I hope that I am wrong. But I don't really want to go too much into detail because I can't really see much of it yet. I'll let you guys decide what you think of that Jeff Hardy figure. Next we have Shinsuke Nakamura. Now this is the first main elite line Shinsuke Nakamura figure. It comes with the red strong style has arrived shirt. Now I have to be honest, I don't want to turn you, any of you guys off this figure, but just in my opinion, I don't, I'm not really a fan of it. It's probably just the head that I don't like. I don't. I have to be honest. I don't think it looks that much like Shinsuke Nakamura, and. Oh, yeah, the shirt looks pretty cool, but I think the design... Oh, I know I'm being really picky here, but... Yeah, oh, let me introduce myself. I'm IEB Figs. Yep, I'm pretty picky about my figures, if you guys didn't know. I think the design on the shirt could have been a little bit bigger. That's just me. But, but last, but not least, and probably my favourite figure in the set, believe it or not, is Scotty Too Hotty. Now, what a unique design on this figure. He, Scotty Too Hotty is a unique character. But something that confuses me is, they just made a flashback series so they could get the flashbacks away from the Elite line. And what do they do? They still release a flashback in the Elite line. But I'm, I don't want to complain about that because the figure looks great. That means that I should have an easier time getting my hands on this figure, so I shouldn't be complaining at all. It looks really cool with the camo designs on the pants and the, the yellow shirt. Um, I don't really mind the plastic because I don't play with figures anyway, so it's not going to bother me. I just put them on the walls, and if it looks good to me, then I'll be happy. And he comes with his bucket hat, the blue camo bucket hat, and the unique glasses too. But what a unique figure. My favourite in the set by far. I just think it's so cool, so unique. We've never had a Scotty Too Hotty Mattel Elite figure before. So that's going to be it for today's WWE Figure News video. I know it was a bit long, it dragged on for a little bit, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Now let me know in the comments what you guys think of all the figures that were shown in the video today. Now I hope I didn't turn you guys off too many of these figures, but I do like some of them, like the, all the flashback series figures in the Elite line. I absolutely love those, and the Scotty Too Hotty and, and the Ty Dillinger from the Elite Series 57. Absolutely love those figures, and I probably will get my hands on those if I can. If, if I have the chance, then I probably will. So yeah, I don't want to drag on any longer. So yeah, as I said before, let me know in the comments your opinion on these figures. Will you be buying any of these in particular? Are there any that you guys are going to go all out for and just make sure you guys get your hands on it? Yeah, I'd like to know. Let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching. And the next video will be Mail Mania episode 13. We've got some cool, hard-to-find figures unboxed in that 
video. It'll be up in a few days, so we'll see you then. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. That's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed. If you like what you see and you want to see more videos like this, feel free to check out the video right there. Follow me on all my social media accounts at the bottom of the screen. And most importantly, if you haven't done it already, click here to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.